In this video, we present the optical parameters for image formation, lens, focal length, field of view, angular aperture. The human eye is the vision organ under reference for any vision system. The light enters into the eye through the cornea, a dome-shaped membrane which refracts light toward the iris, ensuring, ensuring that light converges to the lens to the lens at the pupil. The iris is a colored ring of muscle fibers. By contracting and expanding, the iris controls the amount of light that enters the pupil. The lens is a transparent elastic tissue which, along with the cornea, helps to refract the light to be focused on the retina. As lens change shape stretched by the ciliary muscle, the focal length of the eye is changed so that it can focus on objects at various distances. The retina is a layer of light sensitive tissues that responds chemically to photostimuli and it is composed from about 130 million of photoreceptors. These are the roads and the cones. The light that passes through the cornea creates a two-dimensional two image on, of the visual world on the retina. The retina does some preprocessing for the brain. The formed image is then translated into electrical neural impulses to the brain via the optical nerve composed of retinal cells. In this colorized scanning electron micrograph, we can see the cones and roads, the, receptor, the photoreceptor of the retina. The roads have a typical cylindrical shape, while the cones have a conical shape. Road cells are specifically sensitive to, high, to light intensity. They can function in dim light, so are responsible for night vision. They are typically found concentrated at the outer edges of the retina and are used in peripheral vision. Road cells are, road cells are, connected, are connected in group to a ganglion cell, eliciting higher sensitivity to light than cone cells. However, rods are not sensitive to color wavelengths, which is the main reason why colors are much less apparent in dim light. There are objects, especially group of stars, that are better seen with peripheral vision than with direct vision because of the sensitivity of rods to light. There are approximately 90 to 125 million rod cells in the human retina. Cone cells are about 6 million and densely concentrated in the fovea. Cones are less sensitive to light than roads since a single cone attaches to a single ganglion cell. Cones are sensitive to colors and to fine details and rapid changes in the scene as their response to stimuli is faster than roads. Typically, they are of three types, each with different pigment, responding to the three wavelengths, short, medium, long, and in fact they are called the S, M, or L cones. Here we see the eye spectrum, um, the eye spectrum which ranges between 310 380 nanometers up to 7 740 nanometers, where a nanometer is equal to 10 to the 9 minus 9 meters, or 
10 to the uh, minus 3 micrometer, micrometers. So around 380 nanometers uh, we have the ultraviolet uh, and at uh, about uh, 740 the infrared. Corresponding to the colorized spectrum we have uh, seen in the previous slide, here we see the spectral distribution of the long, the medium and short uh, wavelength cones. So the short corresponds to the blue, the medium to the green, and the, and the long to the red. On the other hand, the spectral sensitivity of the roads that we see here is such that it cannot create a color image because it provides only luminance. We see that, in fact, this is the, uh, the wavelength at which the uh, roads are sensitive. The fovea is a 0.3 mm diameter rod-free area with very thin, densely packed cones, which quickly reduce in number toward the periphery of the retina, where are instead located the, uh, the rod. So the fovea comprises uh, the 2% of the field of view, but it contains 20% of the eye photoreceptor, it's vital for central vision, and saccades place the fovea on an object of interest, where saccades are the rapid motion, uh, bal rapid ballistic motion of uh, uh, the eye. Let us now anticipate how the image is formed into the retina. The light, the light from, a real, from a real object is, is refracted by the cornea and it enters the pupil and is further refracted by the lens and passes through the focal point. where the image is formed. The distance between the lens and the focal point is the focal length. Measured in meters. Here we see that uh, the image is at the focal point, in particular it is reversed, and we will, see, we will see why in the next slide. If the image is formed between the lens and the focal points, then we have the myopia. Otherwise, if it is formed beyond the focal point, then we have the hyperopia. The thin length, thin length equation uh, is uh, give the optical power of uh, the uh, of the vision of the visual system whose units are diopters uh, and is measured as 1 over f where f is the focal length in uh, in meters. We consider now the thin converging lens. The thin converging lens is thicker, thicker in, the middle than, in the middle than at the edges, and it is symmetrical with respect to the principal axis. To the principal axis, making a parallel light rays converge to a point is its thickness is small compared to its focal length. The, we have two, uh, focal, two focal point, F, uh, where F is the point to which all rays close to an incident parallel to the principal axis converge after refraction by the lens. The, focal point can be seen as the centers of two intersecting circles forming the thin lens at their intersection. 
The focal length F is the distance between the optical center the optical center and the focal point. We see now how the image of a real object is formed using the three rules of ray diagram. We have here the thin lens, its vertical axis, the principal axis, the two focal point, the two focal length, and let us add also the optical center. Now consider, uh, consider an object here, for example an arrow, which is uh, at a distance uh, DO from the vertical axis and whose height is HO. We want to know where and how this object is uh, imaged by the thin lens. To this end, we use the three rules of ray diagram. So the first rule tells us that any incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis of a converging lens will refract through the lens and travel through the focal point on the opposite side of the, of the, of the lens. So let's see. Here, the incident ray traveling the incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis then it refracts it passes through the focal point and go here in this direction the second rules tell us that any incident ray traveling through the focal point on the way to the lens we refract through the lens and travel parallel to the principal axis. So, take this incident ray traveling toward the lens, and then it refracts and travel parallel to the principal axis. The third rule tells that an incident ray that passes through the center of the lens will in effect continue in the same direction that it had when it entered the lens. So here we have this ray passes through the optical center and then continues. So this uh, point here is the image of exactly this point here. If uh, we repeat uh, this process uh, for any point on the any point on the arrow we will see that the image of the real arrow will be this one so its distance from the vertical axis is di distance of the image and its height is h i that is the height of, of the image. To compute the i, we can use this uh, equation of the, the equation of the thin lens expanded in this way, that is 1 over f is 1 over do plus 1 over plus 1 over the i. So we have that the i is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over the O to the minus 1. On the other hand, to compute how big is the imaged object, we need a magnification equation, which is here. Let's say that the magnification is obviously minus the I over, over the O. And therefore, since this is also equal to hi over ho, we have that hi is equal to minus di over do 
times h form. Now, we, we can say that if the eye is positive, then the image of the object is real. If the eye is negative, the image of the object is virtual. Let us now consider, consider an example. Here we have the two equations. And we know that if the eye is negative, it is a virtual image. If the eye is positive, it is a real image. In this case, we will see an example of a real image, which is the same as what we have seen before, but with some numbers. So let f, the focal length, be 8 centimeters. Here we have this is 8 centimeters and the O is 11 centimeters so let us put the object here and here we have the O 8 centimeters and HO is 1.5 cm now, using uh, the rule that we have uh, seen before, we want to compute, uh, we want to compute uh, the i and the chi and see whether the image is virtual or real. So, let us uh, redo the same process uh, as before. Here, let's put here the optical center. And so here Okay, so we, we want to compute both the i and the hi. So here we have the solution. We see that the i is about 9.2, is positive, and therefore this is a real image. The magnification, the magnification is minus 0.83 and so is negative which means in fact that the image the image is inverted and finally hi is so the image is real and hi is uh, uh, hi is equal to minus 1.25 and this minus h i is minus because the 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 imaged object is below the principal axis we show now a different example in which a virtual image is formed so here we have the optical center. The two focal point, the two focal length, the optical axis and the vertical axis. So let the focal length be 8 centimeters. And let us put the object at a distance of 7 centimeters from the, uh, the vertical axis so it uh, the object will be in between so assume is here here is the object at a distance do of 7 cm 
and whose height is 1.5 HO 1.5 CM. Now let us uh, project the incident, uh, draw the incident, uh, the incident ray. So this incident ray will pass through the focal point. This incident ray will pass through the center and continue. But now here we see that uh, ray traveling in the direction of the of the of the lens uh, do not pass uh, through this uh, focal point uh, but and so we will draw this ray in this way and then it will continue parallel to the optical axis so we see that uh, this ray do not uh, do not intersect to form an image of the of the point on this side on this side on this side of the of the lens however if we continue this incident ray on on the back side we'll see that they meet here so they form in this way a virtual image which is much bigger than the real than the real object and we see here that applying the same computation we did before we have that di is now di is now minus here is di is minus uh, 50, uh, 56 because uh, is uh, on this side right on this side of uh, on the negative side of the optical axis considering this the optical center so the zero of this uh, of this plane is negative and since it's negative the image is virtual on the other hand the uh, magnification is positive being positive the, uh, the the imaged object is uh, not inverted so it has the same uh, the same direction of uh, the real object the height of uh, the virtual object that is hi hi is 12 so we can see that is much bigger of the real of the real object another property of the thin lens lens is the angular aperture the aperture is the opening is the opening through which the light ray travels D is the diameter of the of the aperture and the angular aperture is the angle formed by uh, the focal the focal point and the and the edges of the uh, thin lens and is given by twice the arctangent of the diameter over the twice the focal the focal length so going back to the going back to the to the eye differently uh, from uh, uh, essentially from a, uh, a thin lens uh, in the eye the thin lens is not fixed but it can accommodate as we said in the at the beginning the ciliary muscles can stretch and um, and uh, relax the relax the lens so object can the distance of an object from the lens can vary 
and remain at focus despite the focal length, as we have seen, despite the focal length is always the same because the, 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 the dimension of the eye does not, uh, does not change. Focal length, and this is uh, the focal point, let's do it in red, this is the focal point. So, the, there are far points, far points uh, have uh, an object distance up to infinity, a near point uh, which uh, in general are at most at 25 centimeters from, uh, from the eye. The optical power, as we said before, is uh, uh, measured in uh, uh, diopters, and a diopter is uh, uh, either 1000 over the focal length in millimeters, or the same is 1 over the focal length in meters. So we have these two far and near points, the O far and the O near in normal, in normal adults. So as we said, ice lens changes shape, so changes the focal length. And by, by, stretching, by stretching the lens, the lens become thicker while accommodating the lens become thinner. So object at any distance do produce an, an image on the retina with the image distance about 1.8 centimeters or 2 centimeters. Here we, we see that the, the, this effect of strength of the, the effect of accommodation is like uh, enlarging, making the length thicker or th thinner. If we consider this as a as a meter, right, as a meter, we see that if the if the uh, when the when the the, the, the the, 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 the lens is uh, uh, the intersection of uh, uh, two uh, small, so to say, small circle is uh, thicker. So that is uh, when the, the is thicker, while when there is intersection of uh, bigger, of bigger uh, um, circle is uh, much thinner. So you see this, these two, this, uh, and these have the same length. So when uh, is the intersection of bigger circle, we see that the, the focus, the, the focal point is, uh, uh, have, uh, the, the focal point is farther than the distance of the focal point from the vertical axis of the, uh, of the lens. So this, uh, uh, is uh, the uh, the meaning of stretching or uh, or uh, or relaxing uh, relaxing the length because it moves uh, uh, the 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 focal point. So far point is the farthest uh, do where the image can be on the retina surface. The far can be in principle at infinity. Near point is the closest DO where the image can be at retina. The near is usually about 25 centimeters. So the, 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 the focal length, that is the distance between the lens and the focal point in the, in the eye, is fixed. But because of the accommodation of the eye, the object can be at, fo at focus uh, clear on the retina even so let us repeat this concept far point is uh, the o at infinity near point is the o at 25 centimeters 
this is the thin line equation and uh, the eye can vary between 18 millimeters and 20 millimeters so here is the image distance the focal length between the focal point here and the the, the lens the vertical axis of uh, of the lens and uh, so this is uh, this uh, is uh, is the eye the distance between the imaged object and the uh, and the lens and this is the object distance the o which uh, can vary so let's make a, a, a another example with the with the uh, with the eye so suppose that the net focal length f of an individual a is 1.8 so which means that this distance f is 1.8 cm so is the size of the uh, eye bulb an object is placed at a near point that is uh, the o is 25 centimeters so from the thin line equations uh, we obtain that uh, di right so di is di is 1.94 so di is outside the, the object is formed beyond the retina membrane so the because the image is formed beyond this uh, uh, the, the the retina from uh, uh, the previous slide uh, since uh, the eye is positive then it is a real image now the magnification is uh, minus uh, point uh, zero 78 so since uh, the magnification is negative the image is vert inverted in orientation with respect to the object and it's also much smaller field of view is the extent of world space that can be observed at a specific instant humans can move the eye in particular with saccades to fall on an object of interest so we need to distinguish the world space that can be reached with a single eye uh, with a single eye here shown in green and the extent of space that can be observed with both the eye with both the eyes namely with binocular vision so we consider we consider this this region of the left eye as the peripheral vision of the as the peripheral vision of the left eye and this is the peripheral vision of the of the right eye the peripheral vision um, as we have said in some previous slide is uh, um, is due to the uh, to the to the rods uh, and uh, on the other hand uh, the binocular view that is the uh, the view of uh, the uh, with both eyes has an extent of 120 of 120 uh, degrees so uh, the with both uh, the eye uh, the we can obtain uh, a field of view of about 200 220 degrees with the binocular view of about 120 degrees and with the foveated vision with about 5 degrees by foveated vision we mean the region of space that eye movement uh, with uh, which are ballistic movement uh, at uh, very at uh, very high uh, speed uh, so that eye movement call it saccade place on uh, on the fovea the region of the retina 
which uh, we have uh, discussed before, which uh, with uh, its dense packet cones uh, can get uh, fine details uh, and rapid ch changes uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the scene. Um, uh, the fact that, so th this is, uh, uh, this is uh, the region of uh, um, uh, maximal uh, acuity of, uh, uh, um, of vision. The fact that this high resolution region is so small ensures both resources and fatigue saving to the eye and uh, the brain. The same principle we have described with the lens can be observed without refraction with the pinhole camera, which is a camera obscura with a tiny aperture without, without the lens. So the, the, the light, the, a, point, a point on the object is uh, projected onto the retinal plane onto the retinal plane or image plane image plane and because there is no lens uh, the, the each point create a circle of light on on uh, a circle of light on the image plane so the image results very blurred and this th and this uh, circle depends of course on the dimension of uh, on the dimension of the uh, of the aperture the camera the camera obscura was uh, uh, which we see here in a, in a printing uh, was described uh, in the 16th century by Leonardo da Vinci in his Codice Atlantico but was uh, uh, apparently was known since uh, uh, Aristotle. There are uh, interesting uh, uh, optical uh, interesting optical phenomena uh, that uh, uh, all about uh, concerning uh, uh, image uh, image formation. For example, uh, in uh, Torralba and uh, Freeman papers uh, um, at uh, CVPR 2012, uh, they have described how to turn a window into uh, a, pinhole, uh, a pinhole camera. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, obtained uh, with a subject, uh, with a person walking uh, uh, inside the room and moving uh, toward and from uh, from a window as we see in uh, the top row of uh, of the uh, of the sequence uh, here is uh, uh, here is the the window and we can see what uh, uh, can, can be observed outside the, outside the window so the the the, the person uh, moving um, occludes uh, occludes the windows, uh, so in so creating uh, a, a, a small uh, a small aperture. And in the bottom row, uh, we see the difference between uh, the reference image, which is uh, this one, uh, the first frame, and each other and each other frame, and from this difference. Uh, we see an approximation to a camera oscura uh, with uh, the aperture that moves as the occluder uh, moves uh, inside, uh, inside the room. Another interesting uh, uh, phenomenon of uh, um, lens and image formation is uh, gravitational, uh, gravitational lens, lensing. In this case, uh, um, massive co cosmic objects like, for example, uh, this uh, uh, spiral galaxy bend and uh, bend the light that uh, flows around, uh, around them due to uh, the curvature you know, of, uh, of space uh, with, their, with their gravity and they act like 
uh, giant magnifying glasses. In this case, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this um, giant magnifying uh, uh, spiral, uh, spiral galaxy uh, allows to uh, see uh, another galaxy behind it from this uh, uh, satellite telescope uh, which uh, uh, otherwise uh, would be uh, hidden and probably uh, too far. Uh, this has been used by some astronomer uh, to, uh, uh, look, to, to identify, to detect a very uh, small uh, structure in the distant uh, galaxy that uh, would uh, otherwise wouldn't uh, uh, be uh, visible. So, the pineal camera adding, uh, adding lens to the, to the pineal camera, we obtain uh, uh, the, thin, uh, the thin lens equation. The oldest uh, photographs is uh, uh, this one, uh, which has been done by, uh, taken by Joseph Nibs in 1826. Then uh, Nips told to his, this, uh, his idea of, of how obtaining uh, a photograph to Daguerre, and uh, Daguerre improved the idea and uh, named it uh, Daguerreotype. And then he made uh, history and, uh, and money. George Eastman, in 1885, was the found, founder of the Eastman uh, Kodak Company and popularized uh, the film uh, photography. And, uh, uh, and finally, uh, from this, uh, he obtained uh, negatives. So this is the end of this video.